Welcome to Next Big Thing Coffee Edition, Part 3, where we're asking the question, is there undiscovered flavors that are better than pumpkin spice? Now, in my part of the world, snow has fallen, so it's about time to wrap this up. In the last couple of videos, we went through all 18 flavors. Now, I'll test them out and give you the tasting notes and descriptions and winnow them down to the top five. Here are all the flavors in their breathtaking overview. Let's split them off into the three different batches to actually talk about them. So for the simple, there was Ovaltine. So Ovaltine was certainly tasty, you know, it was sort of that malty undertone and then the chocolate, but it was really hard to tell from just plain chocolate because um, the, the malt flavor is a bit subtle. But it was my wife's favorite, so I will give this pretty high ranking here. i going to just use green to kind of show favorability. There we go. Next, Nutella. It was a very similar chocolate flavor to the Ovaltine, but because it was a paste, it was a, a bit smoother. But otherwise, nothing to really write home about, so we'll give this maybe a yellow. Fluffernutter. So the peanut butter taste was great. And I'm actually surprised there aren't more like peanut butter based lattes. However, the downfall is you really couldn't tell there was marshmallow. There's that additional sweetness, but it wasn't marshmallow specific. And another downside was there was some sludge at the bottom. But I think with some research and development, like using peanut butter powder, making stronger sort of marshmallow, it, it could really be. A winner and I just think that the peanut butter taste and potential makes it a real good contender next we have coconut cream this one did not really work because how I did it I used that extract you really couldn't get enough coconut flavor without the alcohol sort of overpowering since it was an S the extract was a alcohol solution so maybe you know maybe like straining sweetening coconut flakes will work better next time but Right now, this is just not very good. Okay, on to mulling spices. Really nice holiday tone spiciness. Though it does take a while for the spice flavor to build, so it's hard to get the right amount in because you start out and you can't really taste too much, but then by then it's sort of overpowering. Overall, not bad, but I don't think this is quite ready for prime time. Finally, we have cream cheese frosting. Now, it did have a very distinct cream cheese taste coming through, kind of smooth. I liked it, but otherwise, it was nothing special. It wasn't like, ooh, I want to taste that one again. So I'll just give that a mediocre score. Now we'll move on to the convoluted. We've got ourselves pecan pie. Now, this was really nice. I was surprised on how good it was. It was nutty sweet without being too sweet and there's actually tiny flakes of pecan that got through the sieve but was that in a good way it kind of added a ambiance to it now it could use a little more pecan flavor that might be modified but overall it was pretty fabulous moving on to birthday cake unfortunately i really couldn't taste any real birthday cake flavor other than just generic sweetness in either of the formulations i'm really calling this and kind of a failure to launch. Cheesecake. Now, this don't don't get me wrong. This was this was tasty, but it was a little bland. You know, cheesecake is a bit too subtle of a flavor to really compete with coffee when the coffee is the dominant thing, as opposed to like coffee cheesecake, which is amazing. So I wouldn't say no to it. It was certainly. Um, not a bad drink at all but it you know just it just didn't quite bring enough punch and though it is certainly better than like the weird cheesecake syrup you can get to like add to coffee that's available it's it's certainly better than that so if you like that maybe you'll love this okay we'll move on to tiramisu so tiramisu was okay the the mars kugon brought a lot of smoothness to it which is nice but but then the rum 
it was either overpowering if you had put too much or too subtle. So it was hard to get a nice balance. You know, maybe some R and D because it had a lot of different flavors trying to balance. You could maybe improve ratios and make it even better for prime time because wow, it has a great marketing potential. Because you, I just think of tiramisu latte. It sounds like it would taste amazing. Fortunately, it's it's good, but it's not not competition worthy. Okay, we're gonna get into maraschino cherry here. So maraschino cherry, the flavor really comes through, not just cherry, but that under, undeniable maraschino cherry flavor. I, I don't know what, what it is of that syrup, you know, maybe the corn syrup or like the, whatever dye makes the red coloring. It just, it just worked. And it was above and beyond any of the other sort of cherry-esque lattes I've had. Finally, we've got chocolate banana pudding. It was actually pretty good notes coming through clearly of banana and chocolate. So the actual taste, you know, they're just so-so. It's not amazing. And then uh, another real big downside, even worse than the fluffer nutter, if you let this cool at all, it be started to become really sludgy. So it just wasn't quite what I would like in a regular latte. Okay, finally, we are at the out there. So get, get ready for some bad reviews and some actually surprisingly good reviews. So for Turkish Delight, really bad, just really bad. I mean, I couldn't even finish it because there was that issue with too much salt. But even besides that, setting that aside, the, the, the flavor just wasn't great. This would definitely need to like be tweaked a lot. In fact, I really think a switching from date to like a pistachio based Turkish Delight would be something to really redeem this idea. So maybe we'll do that in the future. Okay, fruit is cereal. What can I say? It was amazing. It was like mixing your leftover milk after Fruit Loops into your coffee, well, which is pretty much exactly what I did. Super surprising, super distinct. And my personal favorite. So then now we have cola. It, it was also pretty darn bad. It started fine, but it ended up almost like painful, like physically painful. That concentrated syrup, such a strong sensation, like almost like a, I don't know, like a, like a, you know how like mint kind of has that stinging sensation. Anyways, it was just not meant to be consumed in that concentration. Then we have citron. It's actually really distinct as well. Um, citron's flavor by itself is it's sort of like a mix between actual like citrus juice, like lemon, lime, grape, but not quite that. And then like citrus zest, like zest, sort of that waxy peel. So it, it, was, it was pretty good and interesting, but you know, taste-wise in a latte itself, not, not amazing, you know, it was, it was fine. You know, I probably want to put in more like a, a biscotti to dip in my coffee than my coffee itself. Okay, going to mesquite molasses. This was also just terribly bad. I could not finish this one either. The, the liquid smoke was just too strong and too weird, and it overpowered everything. Now, maybe toning down the liquid smoke a lot would make it more palatable, but I just really don't think this is salvageable. Finally, we have everything bagel. Shockingly. Not nearly as bad as I thought it would be. Like, I can't call it good, but it was ingestible. And while I probably wouldn't make it again, the experience of a zesty, like slightly savory, everything bagel flavored latte was unique. And I, I learned a lot about who I am and the universe by staring into the depths of that everything bagel latte. So those were my tasting notes. Given that information, my top five to bring to the full panel judges was Ovaltine, Pecan Pie, Fluffernutter, Maraschino Cherry, and Fruity Cereal. Most of them were from the first batch, the simple batch, though Maraschino Cherry and the Convoluted, and the out there Fruity Cereal even had an appearance, so it was worth doing all three batches.
now that we've winnowed down our top five finalist flavors, I brought them in front of six judges, myself as one of the judges and five other people. We tasted each of them and compared them with a rough score to pumpkin spice. So let's see how that turned out. So getting into the judges, we had, this is the raw data of the judges. We had judges one through six and they were scoring one through 10 um, with the pumpkin spice sort of being the, the control we're looking against, comparing against. Now, one thing to note, some judges sort of did a range, so we'll have to get the mean of that later. And then one judge was actually uh, possibly allergic to pecan, so he refrained from judging. So we only had five points for that. Now, translating that into an average across all of them gives us this data here. We see pumpkin spice average a 5.5 .5 out of 10. See here that actually, other than maraschino cherry, which did very poorly, unfortunately, even though I, I was sort of rooting for it, all these other ones did quite a bit better, or did better. Flavor Nut only did minimally better, but fruity cereal, pecan pie, and Ovaltine did a couple, at least a couple points higher. Then, just for fun, I ran a few statistics. Don't worry, it won't be too painful. This graph just shows a range of scores across the judges. So this is pumpkin spice there. We can see here fruity cereal, Ovaltine, and pecan pie had higher um, overall mean score showed by this bar here. And then I did run an ANOVA, even though some of the assumptions weren't made, but I'm going to wave my hands at that. Anyways, it was significant, which means at least one group was different from the other, hopefully pumpkin spice against some of the other ones. But then when I ran some post hoc tests, looks like while fruity cereal, Ovaltine and pecan pie were preferred over pumpkin spice, it was, we had too, too few samples to definitively say it's statistically significant. But that being said, looks like Ovaltine pecan pie and fruity cereal were better, at least marginally, than pumpkin spice. So pecan pie, Ovaltine, and fruity cereal all tested really well. They did better than pumpkin spice in our small sample size. Now this is very small. I would consider this a pilot study. It gives us enough information to move it on to the next steps if we wanted to. But however, I'm going to at this point have to exclude Ovaltine because while it was tasty, it had just a pretty general chocolatey kind of flavor. So I don't think it's distinct enough to really go against and contrast pumpkin spice. So with that, I give you two finalists for our potential next big things. First is pecan pie for the fall and winter seasons. It's nutty, it's sugary, it, it's reminiscent of Thanksgiving or Christmas. So that is one. The second one, kind of a dark horse, a little crazy, my personal favorite was fruity cereal. Now that's not really a fall or winter thing, so I'm going to cue it in for a spring or summer seasonal latte flavor. So there we go. Hope you had a lot of fun. Maybe try some of these. Um, maybe next year I will try another batch to see if we can find even more strange and wondrous lattes. I've already got a delightful list building. So with that, thanks for joining again and brace yourselves for awesome. Latte home tonight. I'm gonna make my coffee till I get it right.